All right, welcome to the Muscle Maturity po- Podcast, episode 58. I am John Hanson. I'm here with my co-host, Samir Banoon, and we are very honored today to have the GOAT, eight-time Mr. Olympia, Lee Haney, is with us. Lee, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Hey, it's a pleasure to be on with you, John, and particularly my brother, the Lebanon Lion, Steel Rowing, Samir Banu. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, man, baby. Hey, they surprised me. They said, Lee is on board. I said, I love it. That's beautiful. And I'm so happy to see that face, man. You've always been my favorite people. No bullshit. I know we're on the record, but you've always been my rival, but you are the only rival that I really love from the heart. <laughs> Yes, sir. So well, nice thanks, to see man. you. I, I feel the same way, man. I, yeah, so great to see you, too. You're, now, how's your son doing now? Is he still oh, hooping? Well, yeah, they love it, man. I, I think, uh, you know, I always laugh about it. I said, not all white men can jump. This white man can jump. <laughs> but he can. <laughs> you know, you know, you know uh, basketball is mostly occupied by african American. But that one Lebanese kid, man, American-born, of course, but he's a badass. You'll be proud of him if you see him playing live. It's really cool. We're trying to get start to. We want him to <laughs> yeah, try yeah. with make, the make sure you send me some stuff, okay? I'm going to send you some video. I told him, I said, you know, son, we're going to talk to yeah. me. Hey, today. They said, oh, beautiful. They love you too, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. good. Thank the you. younger one is six, six, almost 6'3", six Lee. And they're baller. I'm like, you guys can't hit double wow. bicep. <laughs> they love basketball. <laughs> man, that's incredible. I'm oh, telling you. I, I mean, wow. like, first, what a first blessing, thing, man. Lee, first thing in the morning, Sergio knocked on my door. I'm sleeping. Dad, did you hear what happened? I said, no, what happened? He said, the clipper got hardened. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, they're always on alert what's happening in the NBA. And they love this game. You know, they're passionate about it. <laughs> as as much as you and I were passionate about, yeah, life. man, my, surely, yeah, yeah, surely, surely stays up to one o'clock in the morning, one thirty, watching the NBA. Oh, really? Are you wow. Yeah, I told I told her she needs. I said she needs to start acting like a woman and get in the bed with her husband. <laughs> Hey, I, man. I have a nickname of Paul, you know. I, I told her, all she needs is a little short cigar, you know, and a wife beater. <laughs> you, know, you know what? Hey, Lee, I have to tell you something. I mean, mm-hmm. look, my kids love basketball, and I know you're in Atlanta, and you have, you know, Trey Young. You know Trey Young, who play uh, in Atlanta. He just signed, yeah, yeah. He signed $45 yeah. million dollars contract. So if they do what we did, equivalent Ooh. to what we did in basketball, We'll be very poor next to them. <laughs> this guy, forty million, forty five million dollars no. <laughs> yeah. to play ball. I mean, God, we choose the wow. wrong sport, Lee. We choose the wrong sport, you and I. <laughs> I know it, man. But Samir, we 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 can't jump, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Lee, hey, no one broke a record, man. You you're still the main man. Nobody accomplished right. what you have done, honestly, Lee. Mr. Olympia, how many times? Well, eight. Eight, eight, right? Yeah, eight, eight no. years in a row. Dear. You still hold yes. the record, eight. babe. <laughs> and look at who I was trying. Look at who I'm chasing. Hey, I'm glad man. I hold it. And I still have my health too. Thank God. Here, I'm knocking on wood for you, bro. <laughs> and you deserve it. You are blessed, and you really Thank deserve you. it. Thank you. you. I mean, you know, you're not just gifted by God. Thank you. I think God knows something about you until he gave it to you. He gave you all these winning. <laughs> and your effort, of course, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you look at if you look at Lee's record, I've said I've said this before. I mean, going all the way back to when you were a teenager, Lee, you won the Teenage America, you won the first MPC Nationals, the first MPC Junior Nationals, you won the Universe, and then when you turned pro, you got third in your first pro show, but then you won the night of the champions and then you got third in your first Olympia. Yeah. And then you won after that and eight Olympias. On pro. I mean, it's a, that's an unbelievable record. You never really <laughs> took a lower place and then you John. retired undefeated. You know, you retired at your peak too. You retired at your peak, which is very amazing. You know, John, he's scared. Of the yeah, man, I, I, I was blessed to have done that. 
I was oh. saying, you see, I said, <laughs> when, Lee, when, I, when, I, when I saw Lee Haney backstage at the 83 Olympia, I said, where the hell he come from? <laughs> I said, it's my turn. I mean, Lee was looking, from the first Olympia, he was looking bad to the bone. I said, holy cow. Honestly, I felt like I Lee and I were like this. Makawi, Makawi was wonderful, great master for posing, but when you see Lee Haney, shoulders to waist ratio, and you're like, start thinking, is it like, what? Fox is wrong, but Lee is like, totally awesome. He's like, wild, in wasp waist, and everything is like, on point. So I said, shit, this is tough to deal with. But I guess I lucked out, Lee. <laughs> I lucked out that one time. <laughs> Well, man, look, you was right on point. I mean, your your physique was incredible. I mean, your peak was perfect, and your posing routine. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you you were a master at that. I mean, I was like a, I was a, I was still a toddler. I was still <laughs> wearing diapers, you know. <laughs> you were the, that that reminded me yeah, of you talked about that too, Lee, before. You know, John, you talk about how uh, you really learned from that first Olympia about your posing, you know, and how that made a difference for the next year, right? You really worked on your posing. I wish, I wish more of these uh, pros today would, learn, you know, follow that same example. Boy, oh he- yeah, man. You know, I'm. Is it sad that the posing uh, was not looked at in the same way? Yeah. And I think, you know, when of course when Samir was there, I was there. You were a judge on your polls, and you you accumulated a certain amount of points for that too. Yeah. But with that being tossed to the side, you know, it has brought bodybuilding to where it is now. But you know, hopefully, I do see it in the classic physique side, yeah. whereby they're making an incredible effort mm-hmm. and really showcasing their physique in the most, uh, uh, you know, a classic way. Yeah, so it's sort of a step back into the era which Samir lived. You live, John, and I live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was so cool. I mean, I talked to you about this before, Lee, but I know when you did that first Olympia, it was so cool how you had that music from Excalibur. So you were trying to send a message with your with the music you used, which I don't think too many people do today. They just they pick a song they like. You know, maybe it's a, a rap song or some kind of song. Sometimes they'll use song without any lyrics, you know, which is fine. But your song had a meaning. You you saw this movie Excalibur, yeah. and you wanted to use the same meaning from that movie, you know, with your Mr. Olympia win, right? Yeah, man. I remember seeing uh, in the movie Excalibur, I saw, you know, where you see the scene of King Arthur, where his spirit was totally down, and he was sort of, you know, just depressed and that sort of deal. And, and you saw the land was dull. It was gray. It was misery. Mm-hmm. But then once he drank from the golden uh, uh, chapel, all of a sudden the, uh, uh, his body became renewed and his mind became renewed. And you as you saw him coming through the countryside on his horse. Yeah. You then saw everything started to, to blossom and green and life came back. Yeah. And so the king was returning. And that's okay. what that's the signal I wanted to see when I was coming back. There's a new king. Yeah. Nothing against you, Samir. <laughs> but I wanted them to know, hey, here's a no. king coming, you know? You, you <laughs> really improved. Whether I got the butt whooped or not. <laughs> you were like a different person in 84. You came oh, in vastly. You improved a lot, man, in 84. I mean, like, what the hell? You you came in a lot bigger and, and just sharp. And I knew, like, uh-oh. Hard. Yeah, this is a problem. I'm having a problem today. So, <laughs> uh, look at that, man. I tell you, I, I just felt bad for all the guy that stuck around and trying to wait to get Lee Haney. Everybody tried. Richard Gaspari, Lee Labrada. Don't call him a flea anymore. Labrada was really fantastic. You know? <laughs> yeah. so, but but the problem is you are intimidating, bro. You have that shoulder to weight ratio. The judges cannot ignore that look. I mean, you stand in there and, like, forget it. Your size was overwhelming. And that was Lee Haney. You had yeah. a pretty tiny waist, yeah. so you had the flow. And look at I mean, Lee Haney started posing good from day one. He, he came in. It was in the winter circle right away. And, I mean, like Arnold says, I went backstage in Essen. 
and I saw Sergio Oliva, and I said, oh, my God, how I'm going to beat this guy. So for me, when I saw Lee Hayden, I said, shit, <laughs> I have to deal with this guy now again. <laughs> anyway, it's a good, good memory, big guy. <laughs> You were really good at, in New York. Fantastic. Yeah, it is, man. I, uh, you know, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from being there and watching you and McCowway. And, you know, Arnold told me at the 83 Olympia, uh, when me and Shirley were sitting in the back at a table, he said, Lee, you look great, great physique. He said, but you can't stand on the stage with people like Samir and Frank Zane and, and those guys with the kind of posing routine that you're doing. He yeah. said, you got to get much better. And he said, once we get back to California, I want you to come to my office. I want to introduce you to my posing coach. And I did. And he said, you know, once you get that down, you can be Mr. Olympia. And so yeah. that was history. Oh, you only did it. How did it feel competing against deal? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel competing against Sergio that year? Because Sergio made his comeback. And, you know, I know you admired Sergio when you were a teenager growing up, you know. Well, you know something, man, you know, I wouldn't say I competed against Sergio. I would say I just happened to be there on the same stage. You you can never compete against a myth. Yeah. You know, so wow. Sergio was really there doing a guest appearance. <laughs> you can't compete <laughs> right. against Sergio. Yeah. I mean, he was a legend and nobody had the type of lines. I was born. I haven't yeah. yet to see a physique like that. Yeah. He just is just like God said, okay, it's going to be you and nobody else like you. Right. Just like, you know, I think every now and then nature creates that type of person. It created yeah. Samir Benut, the line of Net Lebanon. It created Lee Haney from a little town called Whitestone, South Carolina. It created, it created Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. You know, it, it creates Serge Olivier, Serge Nubray, it, Robbie Robinson, it creates, you know, yeah. John Hanson, it creates. Yeah. You know, not saying we didn't have to work our butts off, but, you know, the genetic blueprints are there and, it's, and they're unique to only that particular person in that particular stage in time. But it's totally up to us to train, to follow the nutrition, to bring those characteristics out. Yeah. You yeah, hard, I thought it was so cool when uh, when Sergio got eighth. When Sergio got eighth place, and then you know the crowd was going crazy, and everybody was standing up, and then he went to the microphone and made a speech. I thought it was cool how all the competitors behind him, you know, were all clapping. You were there, they John. Really showed respect for Sergio. Were you himself. there, John? Did you go? No, but I've seen the video. I've seen the video. No, yeah, I didn't go. That was, I, I saw the video. That was a very emotional day. Because, you know, Sergio, like Lee said, yeah. Sergio is one of the greatest ever. He's so gifted. The guy probably has the ultimate genetic, no doubt. But like Lee says, you yeah. have to respect yeah. Yeah. the yeah. fact that he wasn't the same Sergio that day. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> Let's be honest. He was a little yeah. bit off. He yeah. wasn't, yeah. you know. And I remember when he took little oh, Sergio. He, he was said, older, yeah. He took little Sergio and said, you see this little baby? That's how he talked. I can remember him talking. It's like. We, to me, rewind, replay. Yeah. And I mean, look, look at the physique, though, Lee. I mean, he was a little bit flat, but his body is like perfect. No weaknesses, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's in his, I think he was in his, was he in his mid 40s there? Yeah, at More. least, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. I incredible. Know. Man, I was gone by the time I was 31 years old. Wow, that's amazing. That really you know how old he was, yeah. for John? How old was he exactly there, Sergio? I think he was in his forties, but uh, I've heard I've heard stories from people who said that he was actually older than he said he was. So I don't know how old he was really. I think he's is in late forty. Yeah. Incredible. But I mean, yeah. he won Mr. Olympia I think late in, 40s in the sixties. Yeah, yeah, he won Mr. Olympia in the sixties. So this is the nineteen eighty four. So that's you know twenty years later. Wow. You know? mm Hmm. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. I wish I wish Sergio would do a little bit better to honor his father. I would have one serious prep. Lee, you need to take Sergio Jr. in Atlanta and put him to work for a three, four month prep and give him that positive energy you have. When you win eight times, Mr. <laughs> Olympia, that well, doesn't happen by accident. 
because you worked so hard <laughs> and you prepared so well. I think Sergio needs someone to stay, keep him, keep him in the zone, he, to keep his tunnel vision, to be more confident. I guarantee you, Lee Hayden is in the end well, of the you know, once. Go ahead, Dad. Well, you know something. He could visit Lee Hayden or he could visit uh he could visit Samir Renewed. Either way, <laughs> I think um, you know, it, it it all depends on, you know, where his heart is and where his focus is and Yeah. I think uh, I think so he's with Dorian. Yes. I think he said yeah, John I think he's said that with Dorian, he's with Dorian yeah. right now. So Dorian is yeah. a warrior. If he trained with Dorian, listen, anybody that went Mr. Olympia a few times. They have to have this extremely yeah. positive out, outlook and they understand winning, okay? So it's like by virtue right. of hanging yeah. out with someone like yourself or with Dorian, it's going to give him a little more confidence. He'll be more in a winning zone because he's got a really good body. Sergio's got yeah. a good body, but I have not seen him shredded to the bone. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. That's the difference. You know, one of the things that a lot of athletes got to be careful of is uh, they tend to think more is better. You know, S Samir, as you, you listen, you've been around Serge Nubre. You've been around the greatest of them. And the other thing I've always noted with you, you've never got injured. You Thank know, you God. never see Arnold injured or Serge Nubre. You, you never saw Franco. You never saw injuries because yeah. – it was a type of training during that time where we linked the mind and the muscle together. We didn't try to overload the body with too much physical weight. So we understood that it takes time to, to and, and muscle mature and develop muscle maturity to build a masterpiece. Too many of these guys these days, they train too heavy, uh, you know, with not enough rest. Uh, and they sort of all over the pro, all, all over the place with programs. Yeah, I mean, I'm working with several amateur athletes now, and one of the things that I find that's common is they overtrain. You know, I just recently took on this young guy. He's doing 20 sets per body part. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he he's not far from being Pee Wee Herman, and he's <laughs> he doing 20 sets per body part. Totally ridiculous. But they watch this kind of stuff on yeah. Instagram. And right. then you you watch the guys on Instagram too. They end up injured or end up tearing themselves up. Yeah. You know, I see what recently happened to Nick Walker. It was yeah. a matter of time. I mean, I yeah. watched him the way he trained. He does some real, really odd looking things, and it's just a matter of time before you you tear something or you become injured. Wow! Yeah. You just can't push the body like that and expect for something. And don't expect for something bad to happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I hate that you won't be able to end in the Olympia, but he worked his tail off all year yeah. and all his life, really, to, to build up to this point. And all of a sudden, this injury was unnecessary. Right. Like That's I see in so many young athletes. Yeah. Leanne you used to say, yeah, don't I'll annihilate. Tell him, tell him. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Right. That's right. Don't annihilate. Just stimulate. Right. That's what right. Lee Haney said. I was said. telling Samir too, Lee, that I, I, I've been seeing. I, I was telling Samir before we started, I, was, I see this a lot now on Instagram and stuff. All these, not, not just the pros, but like men and women competitors, they're, tr they're like a show is like a week away and they're training really heavy. They got six plates on the hack squat on each side. I'm like, what are they doing? They got like a week to go for the show. They're not going to build muscle at this point, you know? Nope, nope, That's nope. Normally, about four weeks away from the show is really when you start to, I mean, even before that time, about five, six weeks away, you start to bring the amount of weight that you're using down. Yeah. It's really about, you know, isolating, about mind-muscle connection. It's yeah. about, uh, you know, about squeezing, bringing about additional muscularity, do yeah. posing, that sort of deal. So you, your time to grow is is eight, nine months away, you know, right. a year away from the competition. 100%. Not four man. weeks before it. 100%. That's what I told plus, John. Plus your I body fat is so low. You're, I told John, I said, you know, look, your body fat is so low, you're most susceptible to injury, right? The final week, Lee, in my right. opinion, should be a sign for recovery because your body's not going anywhere. 
you put your ass to training all year, and if you're not ready one week out, then you're not ready. So all you got to do is pump up and just – I told him, I said, Lee Haney probably be in his room with Shirley feeding him some rice and potato and relaxing. You got to recuperate, man. <laughs> right? Didn't I say that before Lee showed up? Yeah, you too. <laughs> right, Lee? Don't you like re re yeah. relax the final few days and just pose and eat and pose? It's not a rocket science. You, you, you know, if you're not ready, you're not ready. Yeah. No. And, and your muscles That's aren't right. going That's anywhere. Right. You know, and yes. No, they're not going anywhere. You know, and that's true. That's true in all sports. Let's say when I was training to run a Holyfield, the week and a half to two weeks before the show, we start to bring the intensity level down. Mm. Two and a half to three weeks before the show, because yeah. we've had the the other four months to get to prep. And I mean, that's really intense training. So mm -hmm. his body need to recover that last, that last yeah. uh, couple of weeks or so last two and a half to three weeks. So yeah. it's the same way in any sport. Yeah. More is not better. Better right. is better. Right. Right. Recovery I even see it like after a show, I'll see a lot of, I'll see a lot of competitors go right back to the gym the day after the show, I'm like, you should be relaxing now. You just did a show. You know, you got to give your body a break. I don't think they understand how the body works, you know. You know, Sean. Yeah, that, that's important, man, because in my certification organization, I have I have laid out the several different training systems. One, uh, getting ready for the show off-season. Then one, getting ready for the show as you get the body in shape to train for competition. Yeah. There's another type of deal. And then after the show, there's another type of workout program that allows the joints to recover. We yeah. talk about detoxing the body, giving the fruits and vegetables, giving mm -hmm. the kidney and the liver a nice rest by doing nothing but fruits, vegetables, plant-based things. You know, you should get your protein from chicken or beans, but you're cleaning the body out. Then you're using herbs, those kinds of things. So you got to be smart if you're going to be there for the long haul. Yeah. This 100%. is all part, you, you teach this with your certification program, right, Lee? Yeah, that goes with my certification program, the IAFS certification. It's the only certification program that can speak to the science of bodybuilding. Nobody else can do that. There's not yeah, another yeah. certification that can. Yeah. And so I've had people come from different certifications. I mean, I've had them come from NASMA, from ISA, to ask me to write them a training program. Yeah. I said, well, yeah. wait a minute. If you really, you say, well, I, I got recognition, but recognized by who or what? You still don't know what you're doing. Yeah. So well, this, unless you saw Samir, unless they saw you, John, unless they saw Mike Chris and all, you know, people who live this thing. Other than that, there's no certification program that can speak to the science of bodybuilding. Look yeah, at it true. this way, yeah. Sean. Lee Haney competed how many years? I never heard Lee Haney injuring himself. So he knew his boundary, he knew right. recovery. And, you know, your heart goes out for a guy like Nick Walker, who got himself in unbelievable shape. I mean, him and Matt Jensen, his coach, they did a great job. But from my perspective, Lee, you don't want to kill yourself the final week. All you got to do, pump up and load yeah. up. It, just, it should be a sign and for pose. recovery. And pose. Yes, pose, exactly. Yeah. That's Recuperate. right. Right. It's really sad. I felt bad. I, yeah. I woke up and I saw the news. I really, my heart broken for him. You know, it's just like after all this year of hard yeah. work, can you imagine days before the Olympia, you tear your hamstring? It's really sad. Really, really sad. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. again, he's young. He'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. I know what he's, you know, what he's going through too. The guy has so much passion and heart. It, it, you know, it did, your heart did go out to him. You could see it in his, in his video he made, he was really yeah. broken up over it. I mean, yeah. that's gotta be, Oh my God, you trained for a whole year and then literally days before it's just it all taken away from you, you know? Yeah. See, man, this, this is another thing when you, when, you know, listen, uh, I, I, I'm, I want to be nice to trainers now, I want to be nice to train them at the same time. I got to tell the truth. I try to educate yeah. these young guys as to, you know, when you talk about tearing a peck or you talk about tearing a ham or a quarter, I mean, lats or try tearing anything. Yeah. This yes. is totally unnecessary and it should not be. 
So if a trainer is pushing you to do something like that, you need to you need to find another trainer yeah. because he or she don't know what in the heck they're doing. If they got you training like that two or three days or even a week before a show. So yeah. I'll be on record to say that. I mean, I don't have to back down or apologize at all. This yeah. cat should have never allowed that to happen. And it right. pisses yeah. me off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I mean, I honestly, I love the way he's looking now. For Nick Walker, he come a long way. Because honestly, two years ago, Lee, I wasn't a fan of his body. But he really did. He worked hard. But come on. I mean, you can't go overboard. About a couple months ago, we had an issue with Logan Franklin, who was a good friend of mine. Logan, he went and trained his ass off two days before the show. You don't need to train. You just pose and just pump up. He went and spent like an hour and a half in the gym. Yeah. And what happened to his reserve? Yeah. Shrunk out. He didn't load up. You got to load up and yeah. rest. Right? I mean, I see like, I know yeah. Lee. Lee was, see, there you go. Yep. You, you, you reserve, what, the final three days for recovery, right, uh, Lee? You eat and rest, right? Yeah. That's right. You eat and rest so that the cell can replenish itself. You have more energy. The muscle look fuller. And that's, that's right. what we call the carb, carb loading phase. There's the carb yes. completion and loading phase. And we teach, I teach that in my certification program, too. So, no, if you train while you're loading, then your <laughs> muscle can never fill out. Depleting, All of a sudden, yeah. two days after the show, you look better than you did the day of the show. <laughs> right, so right. And these cats, man, they they are they That's they like, amaze me at some of the ridiculous things to, that they do. You, you, you need to go put your money in the bank. You don't go shopping with it because then you don't have anything. I said, go rest. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Go to the gym, ten minutes, just pump up a little bit, and go back and eat and rest. Oh, he said, oh, I spent an hour and a half. Like, what are you exactly. doing? You, you shouldn't even be in the gym that day. Just pose. Yeah. All you got to do is flex. If you flex your bicep like yeah. that and hold it, this is like working out. Because the body is already ready. Yeah. The yeah. body is ready. Just feed it and let it rest. The muscle is not going nowhere. Let it rest. That yeah, reminds me of an I did an interview with Jerry Branham once. And Jerry was talking about he was in Rimini, Italy in 1989. And I think he was staying at the same hotel as you, Lee. And uh, yeah. you, I think Lee said, hey, you going to the gym? I'll go with you because you wanted to tan. And Jerry goes, oh, you're, just, you're not going to work out? And Lee said, no, I'm just going to go tan. So then they walk in the gym, and every competitor is in there working out. And Jerry said when they walked in, everybody stopped, you know, because Lee walked in. <laughs> it, was like, it was like Clint Eastwood <laughs> walked into the bar, you know. <laughs> and, and Lee said to Jerry, he's like, Look at all these guys working out. What are they going to do? That's the day before the show, you know. What are you doing working out all this time, you know? Exactly, man. See, and, and I teach the younger athletes now something I learned from Albert Beckles. Only activity you really should have, let's say, is the day before the show is sometime I would go into a dry sauna and I would go through my posing routine, my mandatory poses, holding each pose for about eight to 10 seconds each for about two to three rounds. Mm -hmm. That's all I would do and squeeze all the water out. Yes. And then eat and rest again, maybe do a little tanning. And then, you know, but I'm, I'm off my feet. I'm not walking around off yeah. my feet, go back to the hotel, watch some TV next morning, prejudging all the sweat is gone. That little film of water that people generally sweat off in the morning then they look better at night. But in the morning, you're ready if you did it the day before by going through those mandatories in a dry sauna. Yeah. Right. yeah. So right, right. that's that's all activity you should have. And yeah. for me, it took, Samir, it generally took me about two days or sometimes three days of carb load, depending upon mm -hmm. how how uh, flat I allow my, my muscles to get. Yeah. 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 So I would generally take me about three days to fill up. And when I fill up, I would take in as many as 800 to 900 grams of carbs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. But you could rice, use some pasta, sweet potatoes, and see, uh, my body was giving liquid by way of those type of foods. Yeah. You know, yes. like, you know, like the, and again, the pasta, the rice, you know, and um, hot cereal, those kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. each, each yeah, gram of carbs. That that's a great point. I was going to say, each gram of carb you eat, 
it get attached to about 3.4 gram of water, and that's how you form your reserve. The body is 80% water. When you have your carb, just say 800 gram you yeah. ate at one day, multiply that by 3.4, and you divide that by 442, which is the pound. You probably bounce up about four or five pounds in that day. You get that fullness. You get that exactly in yep. the cell. The muscle will be popping. You will get even look yep. more ripped. You don't go to the gym and burn it off yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, live and learn, Lee. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I hope that, hey, guys, I hope those of you that listen to the show is taking this in. Yeah. And then yeah, another thing, too, you should practice this about four weeks out from the show. You shouldn't be fat four weeks out from the show. So yeah, you yeah. know how many days the carb deplete and how many days the carb low. So that yeah. way you'd have to guesstimate it. Yeah. 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 That's a great well, thing. It's you're, good to practice it to figure out your body what you need, you know? Well, Lee won eight Olympia because he hit it right on the money each and every time. So he knew it wasn't like a yeah. rocket science. He knew what he to do. Lee Haney knew his body and he was confident. He was relaxed. I mean, you go on stage, he had the attitude, I won the show. That's how Lee Haney competed. I mean, you know, like we talk about yeah. what's his name? The. What's his name? Uh, uh, what's his name? The guy that lost to sushi on. Uh, what's his name? Um, <laughs> Mike, Michael Crizzo. Michael Crizzo. Oh yeah, Crizzo. Crizzo. There's a, Lee. There's a, this gentleman, Michael Crizzo. Really good bodybuilder. He get his body in incredible shape, but Lee, he just doesn't control that. He doesn't have the Lee Haney confidence or the Lee Labrada or the Macau. You got to go there and be proud. He'll go on stage and, like, I love yeah. the show. If you see it on his face. So you, these guys have to pose and have to have a different right. attitude. The winning attitude has to be there. Yeah. A la, a la, a la, a la yes, totally right. awesome. I agree. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, yeah. yeah. yeah look, look at how good. This guy's unbelievable, uh, Lee. I love his muscularity and quality. And he's wasted. But I don't think he's putting enough emphasis on posing, Lee. And the facial yeah. expression, the facial expression is necessary. Like, for example, Hadi yeah, Chopin, yeah. he go on there with confidence. Lila Brada, confidence. Yeah. Makawi, mm -hmm. confidence. Lee Haney, super confident. If you don't do that, it's like you tell them, I'm lost. I don't care how much muscle you have. They can read your face. And you just got to have exactly. the whole thing yeah. put together. And then you got to pose. You get an airplane, yeah. you got to learn how to fly. You can't just fly like there off you the go. wall and crash. <laughs> you know, what Frank, yeah. Zane was <laughs> me, Frank Zane was telling me this. I had sat down with Frank a lot. He was my neighbor. He said, Samir, I will hold, I'll, when he was in Palm Spring, he'll do a vacuum pose and hold it for like three minutes. He was suffering under the sun, the heat. He'd do like a vacuum or last prayer or side tricep and hold it. He said, when everybody on stage going like, <sighs> and for him, it was like walking in the park. So you got to practice. Yes. It, it, and and, and mm -hmm. Zane was a perfectionist. That's why he won the Olympia three times. Not yeah. because he was the biggest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He know how to aim and shoot. You know what I mean by aim and shoot? Yes. They know what to show the judges. Hey, Lee. And, yeah. So this is important. Lee, when, you were, and, when you were winning all those Olympias, when you were winning all those Olympias eight in a row, did you ever get like nervous? Did you ever feel like from nope. year to year? Did you ever feel the pressure or anything? No, I've al I always felt the pressure now. <laughs> okay, but yeah. I was never nervous. You know, okay. the, and the pressure was not that I'm competing against anybody else. It was trying to find ways to be the to be better than the last me. Yeah, so that that was always the pressure. As Samir would tell you, because when you're on the top, there's nowhere to go but down. Right. So you want to you and sometimes you can overthink things, you know, and one habit that I had, you know, about two weeks before the Olympia, each one I would go to a straight six. I would do that every time trying to get that extra edge. Mm -hmm. Where by the last Olympia I stayed on the three on off one, which kept me fuller, the body recovered better. It never mm -hmm. it never I never lost, you know, that 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 <laughs> that tightness to the muscle. Whereby yeah. the straight thick sort of left me a little bit soft 
up until I got those three days recovery that me and Samir was talking mm -hmm. about. Then okay. I recovered. But yeah. see, on the three on off one, I never flattened out anytime. No. Yeah. So it was almost like too good to be true. And it was much easier to prep for that last Olympia than the other ones. Yeah, yeah. By just I changing never, the routine I, and having that extra, those extra days to recover. I never saw Lee Haney flat at all, not once. And his attitude is so important. And, you know, the, the thing is with Lee, I mean, I, thought, I kind of felt bad for some of the guy, like Rich Gasparri. Rich trained so hard, he get in really that onion skin shredded. But the problem is you stand next to Lee Haney, and then you know what? You got that shoulder-to-weight ratio, like I said, and, you know, the judge is going to look at Lee Haney. Look at how he used. And, you know, it's a problem standing to Lee Haney and next to Lee Haney. Really. You know, because he's in shape. Yeah. Even if they were more ripped, but still, Lee have that overwhelming mass with class. So it was very hard to take Lee, I'm telling you. It's not easy. I think yeah. I was lucky once in 83. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway... <laughs> You, that, you, I'll, brought the, I'll, you brought the package from here. You brought the package. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you remember, know, a few you times. Remember used to, um, <laughs> you remember when they used to start the Olympia, but they would say, here's your Mr. Olympia competitors, and everybody would just walk across the stage Remember when they did that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see, I I see a few say, Mr. Olympias like that. Once everybody walked out, we'd look at Lee and go, oh, there's your winner. Lee and I. Lee and I were very competitive. Adam competitive. It was all due respect to Lee. I used to say, Lee Haney Animal Kingdom is going to be attacked by a lion. <laughs> I used to say that. We're like all driven. <laughs> we want to win. I don't know if you saw that before. But I'm always, whenever I saw Lee Haney, it's like, the, the guy is a good sport. You can never, you can never have negative moments with Lee. You're just, uh, I mean, the guy is totally awesome. What can I tell you? Eight time Mr. Olympia, for God's yeah. sake. Nobody's gonna break that record. Phil <laughs> Heath tried, didn't. Arnold, what well, Arnold have seven, right? So what? Yeah. Coleman have what? Yeah. Coleman have seven? He had eight. He he tied Lee. Oh oh so you and yeah. Coleman mm -hmm. are tied for first. Well, yeah. Both unbelievable. I mean, come on, Ronnie was also overwhelmingly massive, and he did have if you look at Ron Coleman shoulders to waist ratio, that was also a problem yeah, for other yeah. competitors. I mean, you got Flex Wheeler, beautiful body, shoulders round, shoulder arm, but but you look at the similarity between you and Ronnie. Ronnie had wide shoulders and a wasp waist, so it was very hard to deal with you yeah, guys. Yeah. Seriously, you know, like guys like Kevin Lebron. Yeah. I love Kevin. He's always came in in good shape. Labrada came in good shape. Richard Gaspar in good shape. But it's all boiled down to that shoulder-to-waist ratio where Lee Haney took <laughs> over the stage. No, seriously. And yeah. so and it was difficult thing, for these another guys. Thing too, Samir, another thing, too, is that when Lee won his last Olympia, he was at his peak. He was at his best. Most, of, most, most guys don't do that. They start to decline, you know, even though they might yeah. win. They're not at their best after the last one, like Lee was. Yeah, I mean, the first, let's yeah, say. I think uh, my last one, I wait. Go ahead, Samir. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Lee. We need to hear from you here. We're I, here to hear Lee. Yeah, that last, one, that last one, I was at 254 pounds. Wow. And uh, that was the largest that I uh, ever been. And at the same time, I felt sharp and full for that particular deal. So it, you know, then with a 31 and, and a half inch waist, it really gave me that extra pop. And then the experience as far as the, the posing was, I look at the first Olympian compared to the last Olympian when it came to posing. I don't say I won the first one, you know, I mean, I yeah. won it, but the presentation was, so much more polished for the last Olympia. Yeah. And I think it had to be, you know, you know, because a lot of people said, well, Lee, did you, you, you retire because of Dorian Yates? No, believe you me, Dorian Yates was the least of my worries, you know, because he, he lacked muscle maturity. I mean, he was yeah. a big guy 
but he still had to mature. And you could see it in his physique, you know. Mm -hmm. So whereby my physique had matured and then my lines were so much better. But I attribute that to, you know, over the period of time, just like, you know, muscle maturity of Samir or of you, John, that's something that comes with time. It don't happen overnight. So yeah, when exactly. Duran came back the next year, he was probably about 20, 20 pounds heavier. Yeah, 83. Whereby from 1984 83. to 1991, I had gained only 11 pounds total. Yeah, that's amazing. Total, 11 pounds total in that amount of time because the criteria during that era was such that you had to maintain a small waist, all your lines had to be there, good muscle separation, and the best yeah. of a, a polished posing routine. So that's mm -hmm. what was important during that era. So I yeah. think it's starting to wane, you know, once Dorian came, or let's say Wayne, I don't mean this went away, I'm just saying a different look was starting to be appreciated. Yeah. So, you know, so that's where that went, you know, Onward, I think yeah. uh, Phil he's Phil he's brought a nice package back though, but no, Phil still sure. didn't have that shoulder ratio. I thought I thought Ty Green was better than Phil when it came to that. Yeah, but the Phil still he peaked perfect. He peaked perfect every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, you know, it's a matter of choice. But he had that shoulder waist ratio better than Phil Heath. Yeah, Phil last yeah. was a little bit high. You know, mm -hmm. from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. That's a Very great point, though, say. because in all those eight Olympians, you only went up like 12 pounds or 11 pounds. That's right. amazing, you know, because you I, put I, on quality and it wasn't. I mean, you have guys now, they're 20 pounds heavier in one year. That's yeah. amazing. You know, it's And you can tell, oh, too, it, it, it doesn't pounds. look good. No. It, it's, it looks like rushed muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. rushed physique. Squatty legs, just weird, you know, from, from my perspective. Yeah. You know, or from my school, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, Absolutely. like, look, for example, Dorian Yates, the first four years he won, he looked pretty good. But then he started having injury, tearing muscle. And I saw one time a comparison between Lee Haney and Dorian Yates. No disrespect. I know Dorian is a warrior. He's a hard worker. But I'm telling you, Lee Haney's overwhelming shoulder-to-waist ratio always take your eyes. If you were judged on the table, you say, like, holy shit. Lee has so much width, width to tiny wasp waist, and this is what it was Lee Haney's bread and butter. He's got a good back. Lee Haney had yeah. a great back. Dorian Ace has an unbelievable back. But what else? Look at Lee Haney. got got more chest, right? Lee's chest yeah. was overwhelming. And I think the taper wise, Lee Haney had them. I don't know if you've seen those comparison between Dorian and Lee. And honestly, I think it's very hard to deal with Lee when he's in top, top shape. It's virtually unbeatable, right. man. Lee was a troublemaker. Well, like, like what you can said, I tell too, you? the most maturity. You know? Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, so, I so John, I'm going to have to run off in a few minutes, man, okay? All right. Well, yeah. hey, I want to talk about your Lee Haney games before you, before you take off, Lee. So this is going to yeah. be your ninth year. It's going to be on uh, November 11th in Atlanta. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you're going to have to offer there. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome show, man. This is the eighth, the ninth year. And I want to thank my sponsor, uh, High Tech Pharmaceuticals, D Jared Wheat. Jared okay. has been there with me for the last eight years, man. And it made a huge difference in giving us what's needed to put on the first class event. Uh, we're going to have everything from... Uh, bodybuilding class physique physique uh we're gonna we've got master divisions of course with the ladies we got wellness we got figure we got bikini we have bodybuilding we have physique we got wow. everything you can think of plus <laughs> we have a special guest uh this year the beautiful linda mary would be there oh and, wow. yeah, yeah so we're excited about having linda That's beautiful and bob tick the voice of bodybuilding will be there so we're going to have a great time. We have a first-class event. We give away some of the best trophies uh, that the industry has to offer. Always wow, first-class. And we're going yeah. to be live-streaming those time, too. Oh, uh, really? John. Okay. Live-streaming. Yeah. So 
all of my fans there from different parts of the world, you yourself can right now go to LeeHaneyGames.com. That's LeeHaneyGames.com and go ahead and sign up for live streaming. Okay. So we're excited to be able to do, do this for the very first time. Next year, you I'm coming usually up give out a, an award every, every year, right? You usually recognize someone in the industry every year, right? You did that with Robbie one year, right? Yeah, we sure did. We sure did it with Robbie. And uh, Linda's a special guest this year. And yeah. uh, we, we got some great things coming up, man. And next year, we're going to be adding uh, adding powerlifting, strongman, arm wrestling. And so we, we're getting ready to expand the event and also do our Team Challenge and Fit Kid. Yeah, and again, we yeah, use this as a fundraiser for Haynes Harvest House, which is my nonprofit organization for boys. Oh, so wow. some awesome. of the proceeds will go towards that, which is a nonprofit. That's awesome. Beautiful, and it's going to be on your birthday list. too, right, Lee? Yeah, it's going to be on my birthday. I eat some cake and get to hand out some trophies <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Next year, I'm coming to see you. Oh, I'm going to go up that's and hang out with you. The next Man, I would yeah, love I, to I have like you, Samir. I'll make sure I... Thank you. I'll take care of your rooms and the whole deal. John's going to be I, there, too. Yeah. I I'm just love to come too. and hang out yeah, with you, buddy. Let's go, John. Things. Let's That'll go next good. year. I got some special... Me and John is working on some special things now, too, so... But anyway, John, thanks. I love you, Samir. Love you, John. I yeah, really I appreciate you. you. Thanks for having me on. Mm -hmm. And guys, make sure you go to LeeHaneyGames.com. Get yourself registered and grab your tickets, your hotels. You know, thank you all for being great fans out there. And thank you, John, for making uh, this podcast possible. And my main man, Samir, there for being on. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it was all wonderful right. Thanks, being Lee. here Thanks for with joining you, my brother. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Can't make God bless thank you. Always. God bless you and the family. You too. All you right. too, Lee. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lee. Hello, sir. Regards to Shirley. Uh, <laughs> All right. What a nice guy. I love Lee. He's just such a wonderful guy. He's the best. Let's go next year at, to see his well, show. Some, yeah, I'm, I want to. That'll be the tenth year, the tenth anniversary. So yeah, let's plan it for sure. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get the uh, pay per view this year and watch it. Are you okay? Good, good. Well, you're gonna be in Orlando yeah. because it's an hour away for you, isn't it? You you yeah, about it's one like an hour, hour from and half, Orlando. Yeah. yeah, I talked to Matt last week. About an hour. It'd be and a half, good to yeah. see you. Yeah. So once I get yeah. there, I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. So. Okay. So. Well, Samir, we got to do our uh, picks. We, we got the Mister Olympia coming up in a couple of days, so we got to do our picks. So. Uh, uh, all right, let's let's talk about our top five. Who you know, we got Nick Walker out of the show. So this changes yeah. everything, you know, because Nick was really? third last year and everybody was expecting him to be in the top three or four this year. So, yeah. So who do you think is going to win now that uh, Nick's out of the show? What do you think, Samir? Well, honestly, uh, I've, you know, no disrespect. I love them all. I'm, you know, I'm friends with all of them, just about all of them. But I have to talk here, bodybuilding, and I have to take my money on, put my money on Derek Lance for this year. And he will be pushed hard mm -hmm. by, by uh, Chopin. I mean, you know, we already said that. And I think right. Samson probably, Samson would be uh, probably third, I would say. Second or third. It's going to be tough. These top three. My top three is Derek, uh, Hardy, and then I don't know if, if uh, Brandon Curry comes in and proves because Brandon Curry's got the body, John, and he comes in ready. And then don't forget about your your uh, our good friend. What's his name? Um, uh, the tall, big guy, the white guys. What's his name? Uh, Grizzle. You, your favorite, not not uh, Grizzle. Um, let me see here. Samson. I have Samson and third. Um, what happened to? Wait a minute. Yeah, Andrew Jack for sure. Come yeah, on, that's why I was just thinking. I think Andrew Jack for sure, he'll be in the top four. These are my top four for sure, officially. Then I would say 
uh, Hunter Labrada. I feel really sad okay. that Nick Walker is not going to be in. But those are basically my top six. Derek, Hardy, okay. and no in particular order. But I think uh, Derek is going to win this year. That's how I see it yeah. because his back is vastly improved over last year. And he looked yeah. like he packed on a right, well, my, few pound of pure muscle. So what's, my what's picks your are pretty job? close to yours here. I think I'm going to go with uh, Derek also was first place. Okay. And then I'm going to go with Samson and Samson in second. Hottie third. And then I'm going to go Andrew Jacked. And then Brandon. And then Hunter. Wow. So let's see. I mean. I'm pretty, uh, pretty close to yours. I said Brandon, Brandon Curry, I gave him fourth if he is really improved. If he is improved, he'll make the top four. I, I mean, I, I know he has all the potential in the yeah. world, but I would switch between Brandon and Andrew Jack. Actually, I would put Andrew Jack in fourth and Brandon in fifth. Yeah, and then yeah. followed by Hunter Labrada. So the only thing that we are different is uh, I guess we have Howdy the same top six, here, right? Pretty much, pretty much the same. Yeah. 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 We're almost the same. Yeah. I, th I think that's a, I think only, I'd be surprised if anybody else makes it in that top six. Uh, look, again, I mean, that's going to be top six for sure. Look, I told you many times before, Crizzo, for example, he's capable. But until he does what we discussed yeah. in the past, he's not going to make the top six because yeah. of that. And if he really, I right. mean, look, one more thing that I didn't even talk about. Uh, I'm talking, let me see here the list again. Uh, I'm talking about Regan. Regan, look, if Regan get that quality of, Nick Walker. I saw some photos of Nick Walker earlier, and Nick was really, really in much improved condition. So I, my heart really goes out for Walker. I, I love the way he looked. I mean, look at his waist. Nick Walker problem was oh, wide in the middle now. Really smaller. Nick Walker looks really good. I'm I'm really surprised. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, if Regan get that quality, if Regan get that onion skin and improve on yeah. his posing, he's also capable. Crizzo and Regan. Okay, look at that pictures of Nick Walker. Oh, my God. The one before. Yeah. 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 Regan, Regan, Regan need to get a little bit thinner skin yet. See, Walker's skin look like etch. He look like a rock hard here. Oh, yeah. You notice? Yeah. What do you think, John? Shame. Oh yeah, this is the best he's ever looked. His waist is so much smaller, and his skin is so tight. How much do you think he weighs there? Once John? he carved up in a couple of days, man. I don't. I bet know. you. I, no I bet you he's no more weight. than two forty there. But he looks better than yeah, ever, you're probably by right. far better. See, it's not always yeah. about weight. Remember, yeah. we, back in the days we were talking about Samson when he was about two ninety. Yeah. If Samson don't have yeah. that quality, I'm sorry. With all the great balance and physique that he have, he's he's not going yeah. to be, you know, in my opinion, it will not make the top three if he's not rich, etched to the bone. And yeah. this is one thing about the prep that they follow. There's like, look, Nick Walker prep, which is helped by Matt Jansen. It's too bad that Nick is not going to compete. But if you, I'm talking about the quality of Walker was really fantastic. This yeah. is the quality that I agree with 100%. Now, Samson, yeah. he needed to be this sharp to be in the top three. You know what I'm saying? There is that onion yeah. skin that Walker have. So whatever they're doing with his coach, I'm 100% in agreement. So some of those chose coaches, yeah. they still believe... Fuller is better, but it comes in on that kind of damp skins, John, and it's not that onion skin. 
So that makes the whole world a difference. Yeah. And that's, I mean, Nick Walker looked bigger yeah. than usual, although he's lighter than usual. Yeah. So, yeah. And I will always, will always wonder how he would have placed, you know? It's all about quality, really. So who's, who's the one guy that's maybe not in that top six? He could be in the top six, but who's the one guy in the lineup that you think could really surprise people? Is it Reagan? Is it, uh, is it Crizo? Like who on that list do you think could could maybe move into that top six and be the real surprise? Look, Reagan Grime have a beautiful body. In fact, he's got better condition. He's got a better body than those top six. How's that? Regan Grime has better body yeah. than he's. I mean, Regan has. Look, he's standing wrong. I, you know, I'm not gonna lie about it. I don't like the way he's standing with his legs. I would love to be able to spend a few hours with him, but he needs more than a few hours. If he posed, I, I couldn't help. I took that photo of his back shot. It was so classical, and I put it in my story. You know, I'm a fan of the game. I don't I don't just, oh, I like this guy over this. This photo, look at that. The positioning of the legs, the way he plays yeah. his calves, the glute. He needs to be a little bit sharper. You know, he needs to get that more paper thin skin. Honestly, easily in the winner's circle. He needs to do that. I mean, he's like, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, but... We don't know what he's going to look like that day, but comes in with paper thin skin, 24K quality, he's dangerous. So who do, you, do think, you think, who do you think is going to be the one guy that's going to be, who do you think is going to be the one guy that's going to be a surprise? Him and Chris, though. I don't know what Chris was doing. Yeah, Chris. Maybe he hired some professional coach, really professional coach for posing. Uh, I mean, Regan seemed like to have, Put something nice together from that back positioning. He seemed to be working with someone uh, knowledgeable. I mean, I, after Hunter Labrada, I don't really, you know, we know like Kamal is going to be in shape, but Kamal is going to look more on the smaller size next to these guys, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know how Phil. Uh, I think. I don't think Phil, I don't think Kamal's in it. I think Kamal's dropping out. I don't think Kamal's in it. He's not in the show. I thought he dropped out. But his name is on the list, I heard list, he dropped right? out a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I know, but really? I, heard, I thought he dropped out. Maybe I'm hmm. wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I think he'll have a little hard time because size-wise, although I love his physique, yeah, it says, body. It says right here, off-season started, off started for 2024, so he's not doing it this year. Uh, so he's off the why, list, too. But why is his name on the list? If you see the well, I think list, he just recently is... dropped out a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he just I dropped see. out a couple weeks ago. So who who's the dark horse? Who is the one that's coming from behind, in your opinion? I I hope that the one guy that's going to shock everybody is Andrew Jack. I hope that he comes in looking better than ever, and uh, maybe makes that top three. I think he'll place where I you know where I predicted, but fourth. But I I think I would love to see him place top three. I'd love to see I him agree. win. I agree. I agree. I think he's I got see, great. Andrew beat, uh, he beat Labrada in that last show, right? Yeah. He did. I mean, it was he didn't beat him by far. I mean, Hunter was still looking really good. It could probably could have gone either way. Oh, so, yeah. But, but I love his yeah. body, you know. Um, I think he could definitely comes in and more imp vastly improve like Walker. I mean, I heard Nick Walker talking, oh, I'm going to win the Olympia this year. I felt his he was so confident. and But, you know, look, yeah. Walker has better condition than Andrew. Andrew have a beautiful shape, but it's not as ripped as Walker. Walker was like, I compare my condition 82 to Walker. It was like gnarly hard. The muscle yeah. was like, I, I don't know what, what uh, Walker did, but... but, but but Very Andrew's, impressive. Andrew's making really good progress every every contest. You know, those he, are all photos from the Olympia last year to the Arnold, from the Arnold to the Texas, and I think from Texas to Olympia, I think he's going to improve again. So he's making really good progress. 
So you don't know, you don't have any well, new really photo of Andrew? Oh, he's got a beautiful body. No, they're, they're keeping doubt. it all quiet, yeah. Uh, so he's hiding yeah, for now, they're keeping right? it all quiet. Any any new photo right, of uh, is, yeah. Hardy? Any photo of Hardy? No, Chopin? no, I just saw that. I just saw that video of him. That was, that was a couple of weeks ago, but he looked incredible in that video. Oh, well, you know he's going to be in the top three, and I I think he's, it's going to be between him and uh, between him and um, Derek, like last year. But the thing is. Yeah, Derek is young there's, and he's there's a video right there. improved a lot. Is that recent? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a couple weeks ago. It's very impressive. It's amazing that he continued to improve at his oh, yeah. age. Yeah, mm. he's huge. Yeah, we won't know until until Friday night. You know, Friday night was the time. Well, when I'll see you at the prejudging, John. Let's sit next to each yeah, other on the there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Hardy's amazing, amazing. I like his uh, style. I like his personality on stage. And, uh, well, don't write him off completely, but I think I'm looking at the age factor and the fact that, uh, uh, you know, Derek is younger. And I saw some photos of his mm -hmm. back. It was mind-boggling. I mean... He's way improved over last year. So yeah, oh yeah, and he looked like he trimmed yeah, down. Yeah, someone really like good. Derek is so so young. I mean, if Derek wins this year, I mean, he could keep improving for the next few years because he's so. How young, old is you know? Derek now? How old? I think he's in his twenty-seven. I think twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. I won the Olympia at oh, twenty-seven. Still in his twenties. Arnold was the youngest yeah, remember, Mr. Olympia, yeah. and I'm the second one. Right, I was twenty-seven. Were you? I could have won. I, I could have won at twenty-six because in London think, in eighty-two I had a good shot think, at it. Too, I so. think Lee was. I think Haney? Lee was twenty-four. Haney. Yeah. Yeah. Then Arnold, yeah. Lee, Haney, and then me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could have done it at twenty-six. I, I know Zane. Zane was. Zane was thirty-five. I think. Um, Ronnie was 34, and uh, Dorian was, let's see, Dorian was 28, like, uh, 28, 29. Yeah, something like that. 29, I think. Mm. Yeah, I could have done it or 30. earlier. He was, born in, he was born in 62, he won in 92, so he was 30. I was 30. Yeah, I, well, John, yeah. I was probably capable 1980. But I didn't know my body. I was overtraining. I overdieted. My body was holding a lot of water. And everybody was talking about Samir. Oh, yeah. he's holding a lot of water. Because I was overtraining, I cut my sodium way too early, which is a big mistake. So, you know, live and learn. You see? So for me, it was all trial yeah. and error. So, But London in 82, yeah. I felt pretty much capable. But the judges decided to give me yeah. fourth. So. You could have won that year. I could. <laughs> Not to say Dickerson wasn't awesome. I mean, Dickerson is awesome always, but it could have gone either way. Yeah. So. But the important, yeah. the important thing is that you won it, Samir. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot this of big guys tell, out there who never won, right? That's what I tell people. If you're a doctor once, you don't need to be a doctor twice. So, <laughs> I right. mean, it's all it's all about making money. I mean, look at Lee Haney, how amazing winning it eight times, for God's sake. Can you imagine all these guys yeah. waiting behind them? It's so frustrating. Rich Gaspari, yeah, yeah, Labrada, Sean Ray, they all like trying, yeah. trying. And the bottom line is yeah. like, Lee is really overwhelmingly wide, dude. And his waist is like, it's, he stands yeah. out under the light really easily. You know, yeah. I felt yeah. in 84, I was close to Lee in 84. But they didn't play fair. It wasn't a fair game, John. I don't want to complain about it. But it was Lee, Makawi, and myself in 84. Yeah. And there was that was yeah. some kind of, you know, I'm not a sole loser. And, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm a good sport, believe me. But something had happened at the time. But, I mean, Lee Haney, when I saw him in 84, I said, oh, my God, he really improved over 83. 
So, and in in oh, fact, yeah. when yeah. remember when Dorian, I think, faced him. What was it, Helsinki? No, Dorian. in Orlando in ninety one. In Orlando, but you know how I mean Lee Haney was bigger. Lee Haney was bigger yeah. than oh, Dorian, yeah. and then mm-hmm. and then Dorian started to get more massive, and you know then he took yeah. over. Especially by but, especially by ninety three, yeah. You notice that also Lee Haney never injured himself. That's that's what I'm talking about. Right. You know, look right. at look at shoulder to waist ratio. Never, you know this? I mean, yeah. Dorian's got great legs, but look at the shoulder to waist, and look at yeah, Lee Haney. Lucky. I mean, yeah. Lee Haney. It looks like he's about twenty pound heavier here, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. All right, Samir. So uh, I'll see you uh, in a couple days. We'll see be out you in, there Orlando. in Orlando in a couple days at the Olympics. Making a bet on sushi? Right. You want to make a bet on something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, should we bet on Crizo again? Where do you have Crizo? Well, Andrew Jack. <laughs> you think Andrew Jack makes the top three? Yeah, let's bet on Andrew Jack. Andrew Jack will place. Uh, I think he'll place higher than where you have him. You gave him third, right? So I got Andrew. Oh, yeah. you got him in fourth well, now. You moved him up. Got... <laughs> I thought you had him in fifth. I did. Well, because I'm switching between <laughs> Brandon and Andrew, remember? Uh, I, I think Andrew is probably, would be a little bit sharper than Brandon. But again, okay. Brandon comes in ready. Oh, Lord have mercy. It'll, it'll be, I mean, he's former. So you want to bet on, too, um, so. you want to bet on where, you want to bet on where uh, Samson plays? Samson and Hardy? Uh, I think Hardy would be second. You said Samson second. You want to bet on that? You said Samson yeah, second. I that. said Hardy second. All right? Right. All right. Let's what bet are we pay for sushi? Okay. Not Chipotle. Sushi, yeah, John. Let's go for steak. <laughs> I think we should go for steak dinner this time. Orlando's okay. best steakhouse. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it, buddy. <laughs> this time I'm going to beat you, right. it looks like. I want a revenge. <laughs> that Quizzo. That Quizzo. Oh. Go practice some posing, Quizzo. <laughs> I hope Samson, anyway. Samson doesn't let me down. Yeah, well, Samson right, Samir, is incredible. I'll man. see you uh, be in Orlando in a couple days. See you on Thursday. I'll be there Thursday night. So see you on Friday then, All for right. sure. And thanks, thanks to Lee Haney. Yeah, but- Thanks to Lee Thanks Haney for, for joining us. For, I appreciate it. Totally awesome. He could have been there, but he have his own show, I guess. So he's not coming. Anyway, I look forward yeah. to seeing you, Jean. Yeah. All right, Samir. See you in a couple of days. Thank you. Thank you for another one. Okay. Keep bye. it old school.